But it's true, identity is the same What do you say when you see this kind of thing? You call it a physical change, change. All right, so from that song, you could see we're going to look at physical changes, chemical changes, physical properties, and chemical properties. Hey, Lee, it looks like you've been out in the fields picking cotton. I have. I picked a couple right here, and these are kind of winners. Um, you know, those four terms are semi-bogus. I don't know, Bob, you may agree with me, but they're in every first-year chemistry book. So let's take a look at uh, what you might call some physical properties of this. Can, if you ask a student in class, I know you're not a student, you're much brighter. Well, at least with that white lab coat, you're brighter. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Give me one physical uh, property of this cotton. It's uh, all white. It is all white. And students, Was most, that all right? Most of them will get it. That's white, Bob. Okay. Well, give me another physical property. Um, uh, hold it. It doesn't appear to have an odor. Most students won't do that. But, you know, they'll, they'll say it's fluffy. Fluffy. It's soft. Well, you didn't tell a, me I could touch it. It's solid. You can touch it. Oh. Is it fluffy? It's fluffy. Now, the next thing you would ask for, what's a chemical property? And here the students are stumped. Can you give me one, tell me what you think, and I haven't primed you on this, what's the one physical property they're going to tell you? Physical or chemical? Uh, sorry, chemical property. Um, uh, does it burn? Does it burn? And you can hold this in your hand, that may give them a hint. Uh, there are other ones, of course. Will it react with an acid? Is it, does it dissolve? Now the question is, is dissolving chemical or physical? But I'm going to leave you decide that. That's an interesting question. So we're going to try it and see if we can't, see if it does burn. So we take this lighter, we ignite it, and we see indeed it does burn. So what we're going through here is a chemical change. We're producing something completely different. This is a physical change. That's a chemical change. We've still got cotton. This is no longer cotton. It's an ash. It's giving off some gas, giving off some heat. So like any good scientific experiment, it's reproducible. We can do the same thing and get the same results again. So we take a piece of cotton. It's nice and white. Fluffy. Fluffy. Ooh. No smell except for the burning ash here. Let me remove that. And now we're going to take a look at the chemical property. So we're going to try to burn it again. So we put this down, we ignite it. Can we get the lights down just a little bit for this one? And we're going to try to ignite that. Here we go. Whoa, Wilbur! That was completely different. Now, things can have the same physical properties, but the chemical properties can be radically different. Cotton, and this is gun cotton or cellulose nitrate. And um, it has oxygen built in the bonding. So because this is bonded much different than regular cotton and there's oxygen in here, it is able to combust much faster. In fact, this was probably, this gun cotton or cellulose nitrate was probably the first polymer ever made. There was a, I believe, Swiss German chemist, uh, Christian Schönbrunn, who was working in his lab. He spilled some nitric acid. He spilled some uh, sulfuric acid. In the mixture, he wiped up with his cotton lab coat. He set it to dry by the stove. And you know what? Once it dried, it flashed up. And he said something like, holy hen, what caused that? And from that, this cellulose nitrate was invented. They used to use it in collars and cuffs maybe 100 years ago. Of course, I don't, I don't know what happened if you were smoking cigarettes at that time. It was probably a little dangerous. You might get hot under the collar. They still use it in ping pong balls, and they even used to use it in film.